Hello, welcome to the Doggy Style Podcast. Join me, Al Berg, and my dog Lola on our adventures through Long Island and New York City. I'll be discussing all sorts of topics that you won't hear anywhere else. Okay, maybe you will. I talk about key principles of success, happiness, and we know we want happiness, persuasion, dogs, my life, some secrets, and many other interesting topics. Come on in. Put your seat back. Kick off them shoes. Well, not if you're driving, of course. Take a deep breath. Relax. Get rid of that stress and enjoy the ride. Hello, everybody. Uh, Al Berg here in Lola, and this is Doggy Style Podcast, episode 82. Today is Thursday, July 19th, and I'm working from home today. Uh, kind of some weird stuff happened, and uh, I'll tell you about it. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about suicide today, uh, because my brother was threatening suicide yesterday. So, but uh, going back to yesterday's podcast, so how funny things, uh, people say that every cloud has a silver lining, so... I'm not going to get into the details of the story, but if you want to hear more about it, I've talked about this in all the podcasts on how I made a mistake at work. And yesterday, um, we had a meeting, and my boss was going over additional mistakes that I made. And I'll, I'll get into some of the details about it. But in any case, so I was just a little pissed off. We kind of had a fight, almost, and... Because of that, I left a little early. I left at 4.30, uh, got an earlier tr- went for a walk, did a podcast, got, got on a train I don't normally make, which was the 5.46. And then I got home, and uh, my son picked me up. We drove home, and then all of a sudden, as I was home, I heard somebody get on. Uh, it was a person named Sam, and, and he said, Al, uh, get, call me as soon as you can. There's a problem with your brother. So I uh, went through like 30 messages because I never, I never listened to my, my messages. So just by chance, I heard this message because I was in the house at a time that I normally wouldn't be. So uh, the odds are phenomenal. So, and this is all because I made a mistake that caused the series of events that caused me to hear this, e- this, uh, this voicemail. So I called him back and it turns out he tells me, uh, your brother is threatening to to kill himself, and he gave me some details that he was going to go to his roof and, and jump off his roof um, at four in the morning today. So um, today, yesterday he said that, so it's today. So I called the suicide prevention hotline, and uh, they, you know, we talked a little bit. I told them his story uh, you know basically he's a he's a very smart kid kid he's not a kid anymore he's in his 50s and uh, he d- turns out that he was put on you know, that he was doing bad at the job and I showed the, all the details but he has a, a 12 month suspension and this 12 month suspension means basically he's going to get kicked out of his apartment and be hum- homeless in some way so, uh, so he just wanted to kill himself. So uh, I called the suicide hotline. I called m- my sister, and then we decided to go. We tried to reach him by phone. We couldn't get him. So we went to his apartment, and we were uh, kind of standing outside. We were at his lobby, and they have a directory, and his name's not on the directory, which is kind of weird. Come this way. Um, his name's not on the directory, so finally somebody, some delivery guy left, and we went in. Uh, we went up to his, his floor, and he ha- my sister had put a uh, one of these, um, like a real estate uh, master lock, which you, they store a key in. The, you, there's a combination, and the key is inside the lock, so we could get in his apartment. So we were knocking on the door, and he wasn't answering. Um, and then we started to, she thought the combination had like a, 
started with 19, so we tried every combination between 19, 000, 1999, couldn't get, couldn't get in, we were banging, we were banging, and then maybe after 30 minutes, finally, I think he called my sister, who was outside his door with me, and, uh, and basically he was, it just sounded in pain, we, we weren't sure what was happening, he finally uh, crawled to the door and opened the door for us, and uh, uh, he was in very bad shape, he had drank four bottles of wine, he said, uh, and his apartment is just a wreck. Um, it's uh, just, uh, if, you, if you took all your junk and just threw it on the floors, that's what it looked like. Um, his uh, bathtub was non-functional. Uh, it was just a very, very sad, and he was just, just like moaning in pain and just saying how he wanted to die, he wanted to die. Um, so finally we decided, so we talked to, I think, his therapist and some other people, and finally the, the, the verdict was to call, call 911. So, if, so I think the, the reason they want you to is if somebody, has, uh, if somebody has a date, time, and a method, so he had a date, 4 a.m., and he had a method jumping off the roof, um, uh, then, you, uh, then you take it very seriously. So I, I called 911 and told them the story, and they sent, <laughs> they sent the police over. It turns out they sent se seven cops over. And we went in the elevator. And just one thing that I learned from, you know, this is the Doggy Style podcast, and one thing I've learned from my dog uh, could have saved his life also, and that is whenever... I'm with my dog, and I see somebody who has another dog. I always tell them, "Oh, she's very friendly." And what that does is give gives the person a positive confirmation bias. They're going to look for friendly behaviors, or assume the dog's friendly. The dog will be friendlier. If you say my dog is vicious, be careful. The dog will almost become vicious. So I said to the cops, "He's, you know, they they were talking to him, and I said to them, oh, he's very.' I don't remember the words I used, but I said something like he's." Uh, He's harmless, or he, he's, uh, he's not violent. I think I said he's not violent, probably not the right terms, but uh, he was very out of it. Uh, they walked in, and what they see is different than what I see, and they see a, uh, an apartment that looked like, I mean, God, just nobody would want to live in this place, and he was just moaning and just, you know, I mean, imagine you just drank four bottles of wine. So finally, I guess the, uh, the we got... We got the, uh, and <laughs> he also has gerbils. He was cute, actually. I never knew gerbils were very cute. He has gerbils that had no water. And the copy, one of the cops said that there could be uh, animal cruelty. So I took the ger gerbils, and he loves the gerbils. So, um, so, so finally, so the so ambulance came. They took him to the hospital, and uh, he's, uh, he's <laughs> they were interviewing him. He's still suicidal. He still, they asked him all sorts of questions. The weirdest thing about it is that he kind of was happy. There's, there, he had like a, he was having like a good time being there. He was actually flirting with the, with the nurses. He just seemed in a good mood. Like, uh, but at the same time, um, they would ask him and he's like, oh, I want to kill myself. So it was like very nihilistic that what's the point? Uh, I mean, I do feel bad for him. He has a, a girlfriend, or he had a girlfriend that passed away a couple of years ago. Um, he really he lives by himself. He he just so so. I don't know if I said this. He just got uh, yeah. I did say he just got um, suspended from his job for 12 months. So that's you know. I mean, he can't pay his rent as it is with a job. So he's he's you know fear of being homeless um, and decided that killing himself was a better better way to go. Um, so, uh, weird how a series of events might have saved his life. Uh, <laughs> he was saying that, you know, there's a reason for everything, and uh, you know, the, every cloud has a silver lining, so here, that mistake could have saved my brother's life. It's really, uh, a really nice thing. Uh, you know, I mean, it's like, it puts a different spin on, on life and how things can happen, but you never know what good will come out of anything. Um, so, uh, 
anyway, so that's all I really had on that. But uh, the, the few things that I learned from it is that if somebody's threatening to kill, kill themselves, take it seriously. Um, fortunately, uh, he, so he's in the hospital now. We have to go do a bunch of stuff. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just knocked into Lola. Okay, go play. Come this way. Come. What a good girl. What a good girl. She's so sweet. I have to say, you know, so I was very depressed yesterday in a way. Uh, like, I don't know, angry. Still a little angry. So this morning I called my boss. I don't normally call him, called him on his cell phone. And I apologized to him. I was in a meeting yesterday and I was kind of fighting with him. He, he, he made a point about some errors I made. But, you know, it's just a weird thing that somebody gave me a design of this is how to do a chart. And I complained about it. I said, there's some problems with it. They wanted to change it to something else. I mean, it wasn't my design. So if we left it, we left it this way. It wasn't wrong. It's just that basically if you don't know how to interpret it, uh, it looks wrong. So anyway, just uh, his complaining. I mean, I did make some mistakes, but he just, uh, you just it kept saying how we, I don't know, trust or I'm not sure the words he used, but it, it turns out it's it's my fault that I made a few mistakes, but it's his fault that he he broadcasted everything. I mean, he didn't have to go forward and do anything and find these critic criticize everything. I mean, but anyway. So let's see. So it's uh, another positive. It's probably the nicest day um, today, which is uh, what is it? July nineteenth. So my deadline, I have a, oi, hi, it's okay, it's okay, you're a good girl. Um, oh, so my sister spoke to my brother. Okay, so it turns out he's not suicidal right now. <laughs> oh. Okay, so um, it turns out that uh, he says he's not suicidal right now. He wants to get out of there, so it's okay. All right, you were so clean. What are you doing? What are you doing, Loli? Aw. <laughs> you're that itchy? It's so funny. You're that itchy? Aw, you poor thing. Look how dirty you're getting. You would just, oh, she just loves to roll in the dirt. Yeah, so on the bright side, it's a the, it's probably the nicest day of the year. Um, just very dry temperature right now is pretty cool. It said 64 on my phone. Um, oh shit! Oh, I gotta see if uh, I I keep forgetting to pick up her poops, so I gotta pay. I just remember to pick up this one. And there's another one I'm going to go look for. <sighs> yeah, so, um, doggy, my doggy's very happy, looks happy. And, uh, you know, it's amazing how, uh, you know, a little, uh, depressing, but hugging her and just having a dog, such a good light and lifts up your spirits right away hey there beautiful <laughs> oh come here come here i have a treat for you yes you are a very good doggy come here come here you don't have to run you can walk yeah hey look what i got for you we love the doggy we love the doggy so let's see if i could <laughs> so now we're in search of lola where's your poop where'd you make your poop um she goes over here somewhere. Um, I have no idea. Okay. Hopefully I won't probably wind up stepping in it. Who's a nice doggy? Who's your fr friendly neighborhood doggy? Come on, let's go this way, booby.
She's just rubbing on her, rolling on her back. She seems to be loving it. Are you loving it? Are you loving it? What are you doing? What are you doing? I think you're loving it, huh? It's weird. I'm going to have to pause this. I don't know if I can do that. How, how did this work? I have to shut this down? Do we know? Look at you shaking. You're a good girl. Come on. Let's go to the other park. Come on. Oi. Just stepped in a hole. Yeah, you are a fast. Look how fast Lola is. Um, let's see. I got anything else here? Yeah, so the uh, hospital he's in is called Elmhurst. And uh, there's really no parking there. <laughs> or it doesn't seem to be. So if you do have a sick relative, you do need to have keys to the house. I mean, it's, it's important. And I do have to thank his friend for helping us. So I just got a text said that he wasn't suicidal. So hopefully, you know, he sobered up a little bit. Who knows? Uh, or it just could be <laughs> he wants to get out of there and he'll say anything. Yeah, who knows? Maybe next time it won't be uh, a warning. I don't know. So, uh, oi. It's my doggy and me. You look hot already, so she looks she looks very hot. You okay? It's a very nice day. You, sh you shouldn't be so hot, doggy. Oi. Some bumbling my way here. Okay, wait. Stay here. Stay here. You stay right there. Stay right there. Okay, you stay there. Good girl. What a good girl. Here, you get a treat. Come here. You come here. Come to me. Come here. What a good girl. Here you go. That was very good. Come here. Do you want to say hello? You can say hello. Stop, stop, stop. She's very friendly if you want to say hello. Okay, so stop. Wait, wait, wait. Come on. Come here. <laughs> go ahead. Go say hi. You want to say hi? We'll see. Hey, he doesn't seem friendly. What's his name? I'm sorry? smell it's okay she's okay with him she likes boys better she, you know you, you know she doesn't like small dogs for some reason and yeah she's a, yeah he seems like a nice guy how old is he he's eight okay beautiful she's how old are you Lola you know remember you I think she's six She's going in. She's going in again. Oh. How are you doing? Hey, hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Oh, okay. I don't know what happened there. So, um, met a dog. I wasn't sure the name of it. It was a big dog. Lola seemed to like him. It was a guy, male. She uh, got a few sniffs on. He was, the dog was a little wild and I didn't like the way the owner was holding the leash. He did the, he did the, <laughs> I call it the wrap around and pull tight technique. So whenever I see that, I know that the owner doesn't have very much <laughs> control of his dog. So instead of uh, using this, a, there's a mode on my phone, Skip Silence. I don't think it comes out that good. It has a very choppy sound to it. Instead of using that, I'm going to just pause the, the podcast and then restart it. So since it's the morning, I'm home. I didn't really have time to prepare that much. I don't really have a lot to say right now. 
just it's a weird there was a couple other weird coincidences that happened my brother-in-law um, took a train from Penn Station and it stopped at Forest Hills for some reason and the trains never stop at Forest Hills that go to Hicksville so it was very weird and he was able to go visit um, my brother or stop at my brother's house because my brother lives in Forest Hills and then my sister said she was looking through some name tags and saw uh, like a name like my brother's and it reminded of him and so made her think about him so just some weird coincidences so I, it's just two concepts also that I think are important are apologizing and forgiving people so yesterday in a meeting I just felt my boss was wrong about something so I was kind of fighting with him and I do this a lot so I, I don't do fight with him a lot but I've done this in the past where I get obsessed about something so the problem that I had was I was working on a chart that we got from our user they wanted the chart a certain way and I complained about it I said this you know this isn't right it doesn't make sense um, and then they wanted to change it a little differently but that kind of didn't make sense to me either uh, it just that was the other way was misleading too so we left it the way it was and nobody complained about it until my boss looked at it and instead of I don't know if he he I just didn't understand how the chart was as opposed to looking at it and saying it's wrong so he kept saying how it's so wrong but it's the chart wasn't wrong it's like how you interpret it in other words if I show you a chart and you it's a graph of baseball players batting averages and you think it's a chart of the number of dogs in your town I mean and it's not adding up of course it's not adding up you're not you're not interpreting it right so that, that really upset me and I called him today and they did apologize you know so he seems okay with that so I just find sometimes that's the second time I've apologized recently even though you know even though you know in both cases you know was it my fault I, I, I'm big on partial responsibility I learned this from my first marriage um, I did learn that whenever whenever um, there's a problem there's almost always a dual responsibility especially like in relationships um, you can never just blame one person so I, I, I have that attitude and then also to forgive people I just find that such a powerful uh, thing to do is to be for, to forgive forgive and forget uh, it's probably in the Bible somewhere you know and if you harbor anger over with people it doesn't get you anything I mean really though again there are times for anger like if you see if a lion's about to attack you it's probably pays to get angry and fight for your life then <sighs> but for the most part uh, holding on to anger is a bad a bad thing it's funny it just got a little hotter out here Yeah, so there are problems with my my brother now so I mean if I make an assumption he doesn't get his job back uh, he, he has no money for 12 months and I guess the suggestion I had was that the family we have uh, the six children each puts up uh, say $250 I mean I probably would need more he needs money for food too so it might be $300 a month I don't know what he was getting He's definitely living on more than that. Um, I mean, probably he probably needs to live with somebody. I don't think it's a, a good idea for him to live alone in that house. Um, I know my, my wife says he's not staying with us, so. What are you looking at? So Lola stopped. You're hot? Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Got to give her encourage, encouragement sometimes to walk. <clears throat> yeah.
Yeah, so it's a dilemma. What do you do with somebody like this suicidal? I mean, she made a good point that he's studying. My son is studying for his uh, MCAT, which is the medical, uh, the test again to medical school, and he doesn't need the drama of my brother in the house. <coughs> so I, I would agree with that. Um, we do have family that has extra rooms. I don't know. But so, I'm not sure what's going to happen with him. He wants to go home, but he, you know, if, uh, and again, I don't feel like giving him money because it's just, the, you know, drug, drug addicts, that's all they can do. I mean, he needs to get a job. I mean, he borrows money from a lot of people and never pays them back. So if you give him money, it's like, it's, you know, to assume you're going to get it back is crazy. Where are you going? No, no, that's not, a, you want to stay in the shade? Come on. We're almost home. Come this way. This is not a house. You, come on. You can't, you can't go there. Come on. Off. Off. Come on. Oh, you're looking for, oh, is this their house? So, so, so funny. Uh, Lola just went on a, some friends of ours, uh, house. I didn't even realize that she wants to play with their dog. You want to play with the doggy? Yeah, you're so smart. Come on, the doggy's not here. Doggy's not here. Yeah. Yeah, so it's hard if you don't have... And I always say one of the goals in life is to have money. So how he... And, and again, there's some lessons you can learn from this. Is how it's easy to get addicted to alcohol and drugs. Um, I don't know enough about depression to be able to talk about that. But... Uh, Depression seems like it's a very terrible thing. And uh, Jordan Peterson described it as every day you wake up, imagine your favorite pet died. And it feels like that. So, come on. Doesn't sound like an, uh, a good place to be. But I have to say that having a dog, a beautiful dog like Lola, definitely makes me happy. I mean, just her, her happiness, her friendliness her love and I could see he gets my uh, brother has some hamsters and they're kind of cute and I like him and he and he likes them you know and people need you know so this is a problem with society today that people are stuck you know single person is stuck in an environment he has no outlet but uh, at the same time you know you make your own bed and uh, come on let's go, let's go across come on no, we're gonna go this way Come on. Okay, come on. We just crossed the street because there's a gardener's uh, gardening. <laughs> it's funny how this walk used to be long and it's not, doesn't seem that long anymore. <sighs> yeah, so I was very stressed. And I, I'm, there's the, the few techniques, I do need to learn some more techniques of meditation. Um, I was trying this, the technique, there's a breathing technique where you, every time you breathe, so meditation is basically focus, again, I'm not an expert by any means. Um, and it's also called mindfulness. So it's a focus on the present. Um, so like, if I made a mistake in the past, it's kind of over with and done. If I worry about what's going to happen in the future, there's only the now. There's only something I could do right now. Uh, the story I always remember was from a book by Eric Aronson called Dash. An interesting title, which I've talked about, is that on your tombstone, there's the year you were born and the year you died. And there's a dash in, in the middle, and that dash represents your whole life. Yeah, and so this guy basically was arrested. I don't know for something. He did something wrong. I'm going to say tax evasion, some white collar crime. And he said that the time he spent worrying about going to jail was worse than his actual jail time. And that always sticks with me on how you worry about something. It could be much worse. Like I'm worried about getting a bad review, but it's just a piece of, it's just like a mark on a piece of paper. I mean, it does have some repercussions. I, it doesn't mean, stay here, stay here. It doesn't mean I'm going to get fired. It's, it's a mid-year review. I can always do better. And uh, 
there's a lot of room to improve. And also, I know it just shows me that I do have to see what else is out there. So who knows, maybe because of that mistake, I'll get the job of my dream. So far, I saved my brother's life, maybe. Who knows? Come on. Um, and who knows, maybe I'll get the job of my dreams. But what is the job of my dreams? It's a good question. I guess it would be having a lot of fun at work. Um, doing something that mattered. Making a, a very good living at it. I don't think I would want to not make a good living. Uh, looking forward, being in a flow state. Uh, just being very peaceful. Maybe to be a, uh, a meditation teacher might be a nice thing to do. Who knows? Dog walker. Yeah, dogs are great. They really are. So much love. Okay, let's go this way. Come on, we're almost done. It did get, it did warm, warm up a little bit. So one of the habits I'm trying to work on <sighs> is to do um, planning and post-mortem, which means that you plan what you're gonna do during the hour. You do it or do something, hopefully what's on your plan. And then after the hour's up, you analyze how it went. And I think the idea of doing this with uh, grading yourself on your review. So if during the hour I'm doing task X, I would rate myself and write down what, what so the three grades we get at work are uh, below expectation, meets expectation, good morning, and uh, above expectation. And those grades, you know, you could look at every task you do and say, what would, what does a below expectation person do? What does a meets expectation do? So the idea, I have the idea I've yet to implement it, so it needs some sort of reminder and data entry, and that's it. I mean, that can't be too difficult to do. Um, the other thing is really this uh, idea I have of finish then add details, which again is a habit to f always have a finished product and then add details. So in terms of my resume, I, you want to take, say, an hour and have a one-page resume that you could send out after an hour or even a half hour, just anything, and then build upon that and make it better, make it bigger, A-B test it. And then the other thing uh, to work on for myself is prioritizing, trying to figure out what's the most important thing and then even if you figure it out, it's hard to do. It's almost as if you have two people in your brain. The person who's the boss that's trying to, the authority, telling you, you know, here's your plan, here's what you got to do. And the other person who's like, I'll do whatever I want to do. Don't tell me what to do. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Lola got scared because, what are you scared of? It was just a tree. Uh, I don't know if that would be a good title. Don't tell me what to do. I do feel it a lot, like people telling me. You know, and, and I, in some ways, I, I don't, I feel like, you know, I don't know if it's cheapness or what, but if somebody wants to kill themselves, who am I to say they shouldn't? I mean, do I want somebody stopping me from doing that if I wanted to? Probably not. Yeah, and so there's uh, the whole idea of finishing, uh, finishing up what I'm working on, uh, doing little things, doing small tasks ahead of big tasks. And then the, the probably the whole thing that would be the best thing that I've always wanted is this idea of smart task selection, which is a computer would tell you what to do. At every moment, they would know the best thing for you to do. And you could even, I was thinking of doing a personal one where it would be a human algorithm. And uh, I mean, it's just even a to-do list seems to be lacking. The very basic to-do list is that I want to select something out of my to-do list, but 
certain things I don't feel like doing, it might be too late, the weather might be wrong. So I, I would like to incorporate all these things to it. I'm not sure how. <clears throat> I guess it really takes a, f a focus, which is another key concept that I hear a lot about, is the idea of focus, being focused on something. <clears throat> not one of my strong points. You could probably hear from this, the typical podcasts that I do. So one thing that's pretty amazing is how Google is very good at, uh, or YouTube is very good at telling that you're violating copyright. So if you include music, I don't know, maybe there's a certain, maybe if you don't put it that much of it or under 30 seconds, I'm not even sure. You basically infringe on a copyright and they can detect it. They can detect that the video you posted or the sound has uh, that copyrighted music. Now I'm pretty sure if you whistle it or if you sing it or you do it yourself, it won't, it can't match it. Just not smart enough. <laughs> and that's why I think live performances don't fall in, under that. Like if, if you have a live performance. So I, one of my podcasts, I'm, what I'm going to wind up doing <coughs> is uh, cutting it down and just um, saying the song because it's already done and I'll just link to the video on YouTube somehow. Now how you would do that? That's interesting. I'm not sure how you do that in Movie Maker. How do you create a link inside of a movie? Oi! Just got hit by a tree branch. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. So I saw visiting hours um, were a certain time today, so but I do have a bunch of chores to do in terms of taking care of my brother's gerbils. Um, so I got walking the dog out of the way. I don't know if you can hear the yell. Uh, I'm going to try without this microphone, see if you can hear the... So I just uh, pulled the microphone out, just so you can hear the cicadas. I'll put it back in. And we're just about done. Uh, Lola's probably going to want to sit outside, which she loves to do. I'll sit outside with her for a few minutes. Oh, actually, I want to go do, do something with the gerbils. They seem like uh, they're going to need, need some help. So I'm going to go do that now. Okay, I have to... I have to go to, oh, you can actually come with me to the pet store. Oh, but my son, let's go to pet store and then maybe I'll take my son there later. Come on, we're going to go inside. She's struggling. Come on. Come, come, come. Okay, and everybody, have a great day and let the credits roll. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. The four rules I try to live by are, number one, life is short and goes by extremely fast. Two, if you do what you've done, you get what you've got. Three, step outside the comfort zone. Four, there is only now, so live in the present. Please subscribe and like this video because it helps me. It hopefully helps you. Please leave a comment as I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Twitter, and Periscope at Alec Berg. To get more information, check out T2Do.com. That's four characters. The letter T as in Tom. N the number two, D-O, that's T2Do.com. See you until next time. <laughs>